Jan Charles, Food Network star, television star, culinary artist. <laughs> Hello, we have come inside. Um, we have a 21 pound brisket, brisket out there on that smoker. Um, but inside, we're gonna do something that's not quite so huge. But I'm gonna show you how to do all kinds of stuff today, right? We're gonna do a sirloin tip roast, and this is this is something that is absolutely perfect for a holiday. I mean, this is, it's delicious and tasty and showy and everything, and it's not a lot of work, so that's perfect. We're going to show you how to braise a brisket inside if you're not crazy enough to go outside and set your yard on fire. Um, we're gonna do glazed carrots, we're gonna do some cream spinach, I've been promising I'll show you how to do silky mashed potatoes, so we're going to do that. And if I don't forget what I'm doing, we're going to make some shortbread too, all right? So we're going to come over here and we're going to start by two things. Anytime you're putting a meal together like this, go ahead and get your water going. See, over here, this is going to be for the mashed potatoes. See, so look what I did. All I did ah, is I peeled them and dropped them down in that water. That's one way you can prep ahead a few hours if you want to. If you want to get your potatoes to the table when they're really nice and hot and fluffy. But you can shortcut the work that's involved by getting them peeled up and then covered with a little bit of water. So, we're going to start bringing that up to temperature. And it's going to take a good bit of salt. See, you want a lot of salt. Now that's kosher salt, so it's not, it's not near like a big handful of table salt. But you do want them salty. You want the water salty, not the table salt. Okay. So, turn it on to about medium to just over medium heat, okay? And then let's come over here. I'm going to show you how I'm doing this over here where I'm working. Get those guys out of the way. Now, most of the time when you buy a brisket, you're not going to get one this big. Let well, alone as big as that one out there that's already out there on the smoker. All right, this is the point end, and this is the flat end, and you're gonna have this fat cap, see, right here. This one is actually, there's not a whole lot of fat cap on there, is there, Daryl? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna trim it a little, but not too much. Um, the difference with doing a brisket uh, in, in a braise, like what we're, what we're about to do here, versus doing it on a barbecue using a smoker or a grill is moisture. Braising means that you've got an enclosed container, right? So I like to use a big Dutch oven. Let me grab the, see, I don't throw it away. I don't throw away anything. Um, anyway, you, I, mean, I use an, an enclosed Dutch oven or a crock pot. And this is why crock pots work so well. Because it's sealed, the heat doesn't escape and you still keep it, you know, relatively low. But that's how you end up without having it uh, real dry. Let's see, get this one off. So there's not a whole lot of trimming to do on this small brisket. Like they did most of it already. Okay. Now, folks, she called it that one small. <laughs> <laughs> the small brisket. Yeah, earlier, she's calling it big. Yeah, this this I thought it was big until I saw the one that that Daryl showed up with. Um, I'm gonna swap knives because this one's sharper. Now, a lot of times when you see brisket recipes, you know, have you noticed this? Well, I don't know how many, I don't know if you read recipes. If you see a lot of brisket recipes, you're going to see a lot of briskets that are a lot of recipes that call for a three to five pound brisket. Um, and that often is because when you go to buy one from a regular grocery store, chances are you're either going to get the flat end or the point end, but not often do you get both. So when you see a three to five pound brisket, it's because it's been trimmed right there, about right here. You're gonna get the fatter piece or the flatter piece. Now, what we're doing today with this, the uh, technique is exactly what you would do if you were gonna do a, a pot roast with a brisket. And actually, I don't know how I ended up getting wine in the brisket today, because I was gonna do a, an old fashioned New England boil but I found a way to get alcohol in it, so there we go. All right, so that's all you gotta do to kinda get him ready for the pot. So, this is my, wait, I got beef hands. I'm, I'm pushing, there we go. All right, so we're gonna use this salt and then I'm gonna ditch this container because you don't wanna do the cross-contamination thing. So, 
a nice coating. You don't have to go crazy, but you do want to season your food as you're cooking. And that means you want each element of your food to be correctly seasoned. And if you don't season them now, um, it doesn't matter what you try to do to it later to add salt and pepper, it, it won't taste right. It just won't. Trust me. Trust me on that, if on nothing else. And this is a pretty thick piece. And it's going to be in here with, uh, this amount of salt is going to go to season, even though we're going to have some other stuff. All right, wait, now i got to wash my hands. Hang on, I'm sorry. Look, we're smoking. Why are we smoking? And I'm Something's just... always smoking. Oh, it's because I turned the wrong eye on. That's why. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure when you bring a pot to the boil, but you're not setting something else on fire. <laughs> there you go. That's my cooking tip for the day. <laughs> that was so cute. How about that? All right. So over here, we have a little over medium heat. You notice today I went through and opened most of my jars and stuff. So I don't have to try to show it to you. All right. Now, in theory, we're going to brown this off. But you notice my pan's not big enough. So we're going to kind of get creative. And, and the reason it's okay to do that in this situation is because it's going to, where is the camera? Am I talking to this camera? Yeah. It's because this brisket is actually going to go in a slow cooker. It doesn't have to be beautiful. You want the browning though. Whoa. Hell yeah. Because it's flavor. And if, you're, if your pan does not make that sizzle, you're not hot enough. The whole point is, uh, the whole point is to get a nice heat from the very beginning to develop that nice crust. All right, so, Daryl, take a picture of that. I'm gonna plug in my slow cooker, hang on. Whoa. Now, folks, that looks like a Chris Chadwick white rub. I gotta admit, so it must have some kosher salt, a Chris Chadwick secret rub. Ooh, I, don't know, I, like, I like kosher salt. I like the flavor. It's got a really clean flavor. Oh, see, now you got me over here moving my furniture again. <laughs> hey, folks, have, it's always that corner over there. I'm not sure what's is. going on in that corner right there. I have an extension cord over here that decided it's not gonna work. So here I'm going to be doing this whole cooking thing, and I've got, uh -uh. And I've got no heat. Uh -uh. Let's see if I can, let's see how creative I can get. He's doing good. Now ideally he would have a pan that's just the right size. But if you don't, you know what, this cord's too short. We're going to move it over there. All right. You know, it's funny, I had somebody say, uh... I've got another cord out there. Do you? Get you cord? Yeah, I'll give you a cord. We'll do it over here where I wanted to. I had somebody tell me the other day, and I think this was the best compliment I've ever gotten. She said she liked to watch how I cook because I'm just like everybody. I love that. So you can see, it's something I'm working my kitchen. We're going to rig it to make it work. So like I said, you don't have to develop a beautiful crust on this thing. You'd like to, if you can. So I'd love it if I had a pan that was big enough, but if I don't, it's not the end of the world. All right, we're going to put together the seasoning for our sirloin tip. And I've got the oven over here. Yeah, I'm short. <laughs> I have the oven over here at 350 degrees. And... I've got garlic, powder, kosher salt, black pepper, and you know what? If you want to take the time to grind yours fresh, you know, it will taste better. Today I'm being a little bit lazy. We're going to use some oregano, and I'm going to grab some garlic, which is right here. Here you go. I'll leave it up here. Do it. 
you get it? Yeah, I'll leave it right there for you. All right, thank you. So I'm just getting my uh, wrap ready. What wrap? To go on the sirloin. Okay. And you, 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 we were talking a little while ago about it's a rub, but it's, you don't rub it. The name is misleading. Don't rub a rub. What you can do is pat it. Pat it in until it you know, really well sticks well. Some people do rub a rub. I just don't. I don't do it. I don't. You're just a rebel, girl. I'm a rebel without a car. Rebel without a clue. <laughs> <laughs> My dad used to call me. He did? Yeah, rebel without a clue. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> all right. Here we go. I'm gonna. I'll, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? I need to move all my stuff. No, I, can use it. I was talking about how that doesn't have to be beautiful because uh, it's going in the slow cooker. All right. Here's our seasoning, and you want a good bit. Don't be stingy with your seasoning. And this is going on our. That thing, that that big fat piece of meat right there, which is called a, uh, I had it a minute, sirloin tip, good lord. <laughs> I knew it was in there somewhere. All right, we're using some powdered garlic. You can use granulated garlic if that's what it says. It's not a big deal. It's not that much of a difference. Good bit of black pepper. And some dried oregano. Don't use fresh on this, in this case. Don't go using uh, fresh herbs. It's too easy to burn them in the oven, especially since we're wanting to get a nice crisp crust on the outside. So don't do that. We'll flip this in a minute. I'm going to give my knife a bath, Daryl. Hold on. Daryl brought me a couple of knives today, and he may not get them back because uh. I don't like them. <laughs> All right. Somebody had asked me on the YouTube, on my YouTube channel, not long ago, what's the easiest way to peel garlic without getting it everywhere? And I'll show you. You saw what I did just then where I smacked it. You see how it loosens up the skin a little bit? However, you know, garlic is really sticky. And sometimes, see, even after I smacked it, it doesn't want to turn loose. There we go. So here's what I do. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, but I always try it. I pinch it just like that and wiggle it and you can loosen the skin up enough often. See, there it goes. And that way you don't have to get it on your fingers. Because frankly, that's one of the things in the kitchen that sort of freaks me out. Raw egg and garlic on my fingers. It's, I know it's a personal problem. <laughs> there you go. Alright, wait a minute. Let's turn them over. Good thing I wasn't trying to braise that giant one outside. Holy kamoe, I could only imagine. Hey, look at that. See? Look how nice. There we go. Give him another minute or two. We got all the... Ugh, it's not going to work on that one. Alright, so anyway, that's my big tip for peeling a clove of garlic without getting it all stuck to your fingers which irritates the fire out of me. And when I get irritated, I start cussing and throwing things and mm -hmm. it gets ugly real fast. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody... Don't try this at home. Don't try uh, Oh, you know why I do that? A, you want to season everything, right? The reason I do that is because, you know, garlic is really sticky and you'll end up with it stuck to your knife blade and you have to keep constantly wiping your knife blade off. Get the garlic off. But, if you start out... With olive oil. With a little olive oil and a little kosher salt. Now wait a minute, there's a bruise on that one. Let me get rid of that. It doesn't stick to your knife so badly. And you're going to put salt and olive oil in the seasoning stuff anyway. So you might as well. Just go ahead. This is the part that's not real entertaining. Oh, did we get that plugged in? Did, did you plug that thing in or you, did you leave it for me to do? No, it's plugged in, but you just have to plug the actual thing in. It means you left it for me to do. Because the camera's kind of in the way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Four cloves of garlic. We're going to drop that right on top. Okay. 
And this is this is for the sirloin roast, okay? So on the brisket, all we've done so far is a little bit of salt and pepper. No, I didn't use pepper, a little bit of salt. Um, olive oil. You watch that thing, watch me dragging the furniture around again. Hang on. See what we can do. Now, I'm setting it to 350 degrees. You can use a slow cooker, put it on 250, 225, or 250. Here we go. And let it go overnight, or eight hours, or whatever. Is it going to get hot for me? We'll see just how entertaining I can be in a minute. Is that thing going to work? Alright, so he's just about. Just about not crusted everywhere. So we're going to come over here to. Hmm. Carol? You know what I think we might do? What? Oh, okay. no, there it goes. It goes. There it's going. Okay. I finally got some heat. This is not actually a slow cooker, it's one of those roasters. A lot of times you see them in the discount stores near the holidays. And it's supposed to be so you've got to fix our oven for your turkey. But you have temperature control on this thing to 150 degrees. And it'll go all, all the way up to 450. Now mine doesn't get that hot. It's supposed to be with oven. However, I have realized that thing started to serve really well as a slow cooker. If you're cooking in volume. All right. Here we go. Seven pound brisket. <laughs> now... Uh, he did it. He did it. That's a strong girl, man. All right, so we're putting this in here, 350 degrees, and now we're going to go take advantage of all this yummy stuff that's left in the bottom of this wow, pan. Up there. All right. So I don't want the the brown bits. I don't want those to burn. So I'm setting it to the side, but I'm leaving the eye turned on because we're going to make the jus. Okay. So, here's what we're doing. I have some celery and some carrots and some onion. So we've got a classic mirepoix, right? Fancy French name, it's not fancy at all. And we're gonna rough chop these. You don't have to have them real small or real beautiful or real perfect. We're gonna get that heated back up now. Except for the piece I just threw on the floor. <laughs> you might need to move that before the Kinsley comes home and that's there, she'll pick it up and eat it. That child loves a carrot. All right. So this is what's going to help develop the flavor base in our brisket. Probably should have had another stalk of celery, but it would have meant going to the grocery store and I was being lazy. So we had a little bit less celery than would be ideal. But you want, in general, twice the amount of onion as you have carrot and celery. If you happen to like carrots, use more. It's your food, make it how you like. So I'm just cutting these in big chunks. We're just gonna saute these for a minute. Everybody in here. Okay, you're a little moving. All right, wait. Ah, shoot, I was gonna get my little dish. I forgot to get a clean dish for my salt. Where's it at? Uh, uh, it's behind all those lights where, where I can't reach it. Oh, in here? Yeah. One of those little ramekins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know why I like to keep the salt in here? Okay. Well, you can pinch it, and it's really easy to determine how much you have. So you'll, 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 see, chef, you'll see chefs on TV being all chefy. You know? There's a reason they do that. You can tell how much you have. And if you're doing it way up here, you notice how you, it's, it's like it's snowing? Yeah, it spreads food. out. It spreads out, and you get a much more even, even distribution of your salt. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right. So, pepper. I often have pepper over here, too, but I don't. Not right now. I tell you, I'm really lazy today. A lot of stuff I wasn't going to... I don't want to work hard when it's a holiday. You know what? Yeah, that's That right. is not... Oh, you are so going to laugh at me here. I found it. So you're gonna laugh at me if I couldn't find my uh, my bottle opener. All right, this is always gonna be good for a laugh. Watch me open the wine. 
Now, when you're cooking with wine and cooking with alcohol, which I love to do because it's got so much flavor, there's this big thing about how, ooh, all the alcohol burns off. Oh, no, it doesn't. It never completely burns off. Where did I put here? Jeez, it's right in front of me. Here's the thing. After 15 minutes, oh, boy, boy, boy. isn't that cool? That's one of my few cool kitchen gadgets. And it's, it's because my hands are so weak. Whoa. I'm delicate, <laughs> so I have to have some help. <laughs> All right, here, I'm going to throw the rest of these in here and let them just keep going. Is it hot? A little bit. I'm sliding those up there, and they'll just do their thing while that roast goes. Okay, when you're getting wine to cook with, taste it, you know. It, people are very tempted, <laughs> pardon me, people are very tempted to go in and get a cheap bottle of wine to cook with. Well, here's the thing, you just spent $40 on that brisket, and you've probably got another five bucks in the pan with the other ingredients. Don't go ruining it with a really cheap wine. Make sure you like it. Now, with that said, there are tons of really good wines out there that are not very expensive. And if you have questions, chances are, the people at the wine shop are very happy to help set you up, all right? So there's my wine spiel. I happen to have an aunt that, that manages the liquor store, so I have inside information. Okay, red wine. You can use a Merlot, you can use uh, a Pinot, you can use uh, a Cabernet. You can use a lot. You can use a lot. How about <laughs> Don't you pass that me. <laughs> it's about two cups, I think. Actually, it's a little bit more because that's a big old brisket over there. And there, that's dealt with. I'm gonna make you deal with that later. Alrighty. So, if you have the opportunity, by all means, make your own stocks. But even as as crazy as I am for homemade broth and homemade stock, beef broth is a little harder to pull off than chicken stock. Chicken stock you can throw on and you can have it in moments. Um, not so much with beef. It's harder to obtain the right bones. You have to make sure that they're cut to the size of your stock pot and, it, you know, it's a mess. Now, I happen to have a butcher and they taught hey listen, I have a butcher that will do this for me and if you have one, Go search them out because they're worth their weight in gold. Call and tell them you want shank and knuckle and that you need it whatever size your stock pot is, you need to cut to that length and they'll do it. I just have to remember, which that's, there's my number one problem, I don't remember. You have to remember to do it far enough ahead of time it's for whatever you're going to do. Now, homemade beef broth takes a little more effort, but oh lord, it's worth it. We need to shoot that, don't we? Yeah. We need to shoot that. All right, so I put two, three cups of wine in here. I have three or four cups of beef broth. Now, one of the problems with home, with the commercial beef broth, it really doesn't have any body, right? It doesn't have any oomph to its flavor, and you want that deep, intense, concentrated flavor. You can improve a lot with some fresh herbs. I don't know why I'm waving this piece of rosemary <laughs> with you. <laughs> fresh rosemary. <laughs> Sorry. And a can of tomatoes. Diced tomatoes, it's a 14 ounce can. <laughs> and we're gonna do a couple other things real quick. We're gonna bring this up to a boil. Here I am, back in the garlic. Can you smell that yet? Man, yeah, oh, boy, that was good. Sometimes I surprise myself. Sometimes. All right, I keep trying to make sure I've got my beef knife and my my veggie knife separate. <laughs> you thought I was losing it. Did he run away? Yeah. No, no olive oil this time. No olive oil this time because, and you'll eventually you'll see why. These can be in big chunks. You know, the smaller you cut the garlic, the more intense the garlic flavor, and it can be pretty sharp. You know, if you that bothers you, cut it off. It's not completely necessary. It kind of bugs me. And see, look, it's with the garlic I bought today. All right, wait a minute. We got to do some surgery on the garlic. Daryl, what was that? What was that? I don't know. I don't 
don't think I want to know. Oh, I know what it was. What? It's the insert for that slow cooker. Once it gets to a certain temperature, it pops a little bit because, you know, temperature, oh, yeah, temperature oh, okay. will make it warp. Okay. So if it's warped, I, it's done that before. And I think every time I've said, what was that? Oh, it's a slow cooker. I was afraid the our cooker outside had caught on fire. <laughs> it blew sure. up. <laughs> that wouldn't make an interesting <laughs> show. <laughs> hey. Hey, um, you might want to call the fire department. We, could, yeah. we could call, we could, well, you know, we could feed them when they get here. <laughs> All right, so you can have all these big pieces right in the pot. And you want to bring this up to a nice, hot, solid boil. All right, so give me half a second. Look, I've got all this stuff all over the place. I'm making messes. My dog is mad at me because I'm not giving him all this beef. Boudin. Boudin. Boudin, shoot. You know, that, that he's a wiener dog. Boudin is a, yes, you, I think I'm calling him. Boudin is a, uh, a sausage usually made with... Uh, seafood and rice from uh, New Orleans. He hollered at me earlier, huh? earlier, he hollered at me earlier today, too. He was saying. That so means we get to shoot for at least 25 more minutes. We got 25 more minutes? Yay! <laughs> well, that'll work. We'll deal with that. So this has been sitting over here simmering. And this is the wine and the veggies and the the stuff that we're going to use. Ah. Ooh. See? Isn't that nice? You. Yep. Okay, wait. So, our brisket is over here in the rice stir. Ah. Wow, well, that's a nice you. <laughs> Holy commode. Right over the top. Melissa, what time is it now? He is 2.39. 2.39. So we will let him go for three hours, okay? So 5.39, we'll be back and show you what that one looks like. And in the meantime, we're just leaving him alone, okay? We let, surprise! <laughs> Hi, cutie. We let this brisket go for about three and a half to four hours. <laughs> okay, wait, Joey. We're talking to the camera. Gotta be quiet, okay? We let this brisket go for about three and a half to four hours, and I just pulled it out, right? So this is going to sit over here, and it's going to rest. However, we are not done yet, because this is going to take about half an hour. So in the meantime, <laughs> half an hour, and then, why are you wearing a coat? In the meantime, we're going to take all this stuff. You remember how we created the braising liquid on the stovetop? Wow. We're going to take all of this, I'm going to run it through my, my strainer, I'll stick it on the stovetop, and simmer it down. And so it's going to get a half hour, too. So this is going to reduce for half an hour. This is going to rest for half an hour. That's, that's um, it's a sauce is what it is. Okay, so here's what we did. I've let this brisket just sit for not quite half an hour, but almost half an hour. And you know what happens when it, when it sits? Shh, Joey, Joey, shh, shh. When something cooks, all the juices rise to the exterior, right? When, to the outside of the roast. And when it rests and it starts cooling down, it's almost like, and all the juices go back to the middle, right? So that's why resting is so important. You gotta sneak up on it. Okay, Joey. Hey, hey, Joey, look at me. Okay. It's physically impossible for him to be quiet. Okay. Watch well, 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 how you gonna dump it on the floor, Joey. Okay. All right, so he go. doesn't care. So this is our brisket after it's rested. And this is, this is the type of, of cooking method you would use if you want to do an old-fashioned pot roast, either a, a New England style. Um, one of my friends was, was talking today about a um, Jewish comfort food, and this is the type of brisket that's used there. All right, so now what we have here is the equivalent of a burnt end. I love those, but you know, not necessarily the slice that you want to put on somebody's plate. That's the cook's portion. You get to have the goodies from the for all the secret stuff that's... Uh, held back in, in the kitchen. Hey, Hello, fellas. Okay. Um, let me do another piece. Sorry, I couldn't resist it. I've been smelling for All right, so what I want you to notice by this is look at the juices that are not going on the platter. All right? It's because they're still in here. And Daryl, I don't know if you can get this close to this, but I want you to see the juice. You can see? Did you see it? Do you see it? Yes, yeah, right. right out the side of the piece. Right. That means that the juices are in the roast, not on the platter, and it's going to be really good. So, uh, 
Anyway, this is how you do a braised brisket. Now, if you remember, we crusted it, and then we made a braising liquid with red wine and tomatoes and beef broth, right? After we were done, I strained out the carrots and the onions and the celery and the chunks of the tomato and, oh good lord, oh wow. Mm. So I strained that and I stuck it in a pot on top of the stove while the brisket was resting. So here is a souped up jus. Yeah, it's a, it's, oh, wow. That goes right over the top. All right, so here we go. Brent, how did I do, buddy? I like my steak knife. I, I don't know. How, how did you do? <laughs> I, I think it's pretty good. Oh my lord! Look how tender that is. Well, wait, just fell wait, did apart you see that? You it. Yeah. Did you see that? Fell apart. Do it one more time. All right, wait a minute. Look. Fell apart when you touched it. Wow! Look see, at that. See, that's that's the whole pork tender thing. That's because we slice across the grain, and we braised it, and we let all those collagens and, and connective tissues break down. Wow. <laughs> there's ten there's there's eight pounds of this one. We might. Okay. Now Rick's the one who ate the seven pound Boston butt, right? Yeah, Ricky's the oh my god. Um, one day I had made a pork butt, Boston butt, you know, you, it comes under different names. And I was doing a pulled pork something on, on my T V show the next day. Oh, hit that timer, baby. And I braised the uh huh. Pulled out. Oh no, no, not yet. I braised the pork butt, right? And I had it, I pulled seven pounds of pork and stuck it in the refrigerator because I would take it to the station the next day and show the prep work and then show the finished product. Except when I got ready to go to work the next morning, there's this much pork butt in the bottom of the container. Because Ricky had eaten the entire thing. He was he's the one, yeah, he's the 6'3 one. Yeah. So the kids have, have slowly learned, don't touch what might possibly be show food, because I almost murdered him at that point. <laughs> All right, so yes, you can do a barbecue brisket. I have to say I love barbecue brisket. But there's a million other things you can do with a brisket. And though the barbecue people are going to show you how to do the smoker thing, which I love, I do love, I'm going to show you the remaining world of brisketry. <laughs> That's not a word. But this little pot roast is one of the best things that you can make. You talk about a Sunday dinner. I mean, this is it. It to be Sunday. Probably eat it anyway. For Thursday. <laughs> oh, Lord, this is good. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday. Wednesday. Oh, How do you really feel about okay. that, Ruth? Well, there's a beautiful brisket. I want to thank you for coming by the Jan Charles show. Have a great day.